Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor. I'd like to uh, show you uh, an editing workflow inside of the develop module of Lightroom. I'm just going to cycle back to the edited version. As you can see, uh, this image uh, really starts to take off after a little bit of work, maybe just five minutes work inside of the develop module. Uh, you can see the settings up in here. I've got the information settings switched on. It's a 30 second uh, long exposure using an ND400 filter. Okay, now uh, I'm in the full screen mode. Uh, if you just press the Shift F, you can cycle through those modes. And uh, I'll just press the I key to hide that information and hit the reset button to start. Okay, and where do we start? Basically, we can start anywhere we like. It's a non-linear editing program. Uh, I get the sense that the horizon line is going slightly downhill, so I'm just going to press that R key uh, to get into the crop overlay. And I can just uh, click and drag the corner and we get this grid to help me, or I could just um, get the, uh, the angle uh, tool there and run that along the horizon line. Uh, this isn't a ski slope, it is um, a seascape. So uh, we've done that nicely and uh, I'm just going to bring that in a little bit more um, for the perfect crop there and hit the R key again. Okay, now this is a sunset shot and it's really not doing justice to the colors I was seeing uh, on the day. Uh, the foreground's too dark, the sky is too light, so we're just going to swing in and bring those highlights down. Let's not be um, shy here, let's just bring them all the way down to minus 100 and uh, um, get the shadows and let's, uh, let's, let's see what we can see in those shadows. Let's uh, swing that all the way up, uh, maybe not quite as far as 100, maybe maybe 80. Okay, now it's looking a little bit flat and so one of the things that is um, not not usual or not uh, people don't normally think of doing that after removing contrast we go and put it back in. Okay, and uh, this will give a, a more sense of reality rather than that flash flat dishwater image that we were just looking at but we're still getting plenty of detail in the foreground and in the sky. It's looking incredibly cold so I'm just going to swing that temperature slider up um, so I feel the warmth uh, that we, I was feeling uh, on this warm summer's night. Now this is a subjective adjustment if you were freezing and it was a dawn shoot by all means go ahead and make it cool but I'm feeling the warmth here and I'm going to go up to 6900 or so. Okay, so that's um, that's looking pretty good, but again, the colors really aren't staking off for me. So I'm going to grab that vibrant slider and give that a big push. And uh, what often happens with the vibrant slider is some of the warmer colors get left behind. They don't want to come with the other colors that are becoming very vibrant. So sometimes that needs a nudge as well. And uh, we're going to give that a, a plus 20 or so nudge. Okay, that's um, looking pretty good uh, but we can go a lot further with this image with one of my favorite features the graduated filters if you've got any settings here that you need to zero just double click the word effect I'm going to lower the exposure by a stop or so and also pull in some highlights here maybe a minus one stop and minus 50 on the highlights and just pull that in and get a really nice graduated filter I could have done this in camera but hey we can do this in Lightroom as well as long as we don't clip that sky where we can bring that sky down uh, quite a lot. Okay now I can, I'm going to add a new graduated filter sometimes shadows um, uh, can have um, a slightly peculiar colors they can either be cold I'm thinking this one is uh, going to need a, a little bit of magenta actually uh, we're getting a little bit of a green cast in there maybe a little bit of warmth and then wind that up into that image uh, I've decided I don't want the warmth so I'll just double click on that one to set it and I'm also going to bring up the shadows some more as well okay okay so let's uh, come out of those graduated filters now um, uh, we're probably notice if we look at the histogram we've got a bit of a gap over here that means uh, we don't have a white uh, point set for this image now you can click on that uh, clipping warning triangle and just swing that over until we have our white point light up there and you can see it's appearing in the clouds in the center of the image okay and obviously we don't want that clipping so we'll just wind that back until no clipping. You, an alternative way of approaching this is just to hold down the uh, Alt Option key and uh, then we can find out where the clipping is occurring. Okay, and uh, we'll switch that a little triangle off 
Okay, so um, I'm pretty happy with this image now, but there will be, if we zoom in, uh, all won't be as good as we're seeing in this uh, fitting screen preview. With such heavy amounts of edits on those shadows, sliders, you are going to start seeing a little bit of noise appear. Even though the ISO was set to 100, um, the amount of shadow recovery that we've done is quite significant here. So I'm going to go into my detail tab. You'll notice my basic tab closed automatically because I'm in solo mode, which is something I love here. Okay, I'm just going to swing that up to maybe um, uh, a 30 uh, luminance reduction, and that will smooth out those continuous tones really nicely. If I sharpen this image, you'll probably notice that that noise starts to reappear in those smoother areas. And the way we can combat that is to raise the masking slider. Again, holding down the Alt Option key and raising that will just clean out um, uh, those smoother tones so that we get no sharpening appearing and therefore no sharpening, no noise um, in those areas. Now, um, typically uh, 25 on the color noise reduction is a, is a great setting 95% of the time. But again, with these aggressive edits, you'll probably want to raise that um, closer to 50 just to remove some of the excess color noise. This is very subtle, but I'm just seeing a little bit of color blotchiness or banding in this image. And we can smooth that out using the smoothness slider here and create um, some really nice liquid smooth transitions of of color in that beautiful sky. Okay, so let's come uh, back uh, to the uh, basic uh, tab there. Okay, and uh, we'll zoom out so we can see our progress. Now, one of the other things that you might see on such a, a wide angle image, this is shot uh, at a, an 11 millimeter focal length, is uh, chromatic aberration and barrel distortion is pretty much guaranteed. Now, if, if I zoom in on those areas, you're probably not going to be seeing too much of it because down in my lens corrections, <coughs> and if I go to the basic tab there, you'll see that these were already checked. And this is removing the um, barrel distortion uh, that uh, this lens would uh, be giving us, or, or a sort of fisheye look. And also it's removing that chromatic aberration, which we would see at the edges. Now, I am actually still seeing uh, some of uh, a little bit of um, color fringing on these edges here. Now let's just uh, let it uh, pull focus there. Okay, it's uh, it's especially noticeable um, down here, for instance. We've got a little bit of magenta um, just kicking off some of these edges. Now, uh, most of the uh, chromatic aberration is being removed by that checkbox, but if we're seeing a little bit of color fringing, then we come over to the color tab, pick up this little eyedropper, move into the image, pick up that unnatural color. You can see it right on the edge on that magnified view and just click and it's as simple as that and that's neutralized that color fringing on those edges this is the sort of stuff that you'd really only notice if we were uh, printing this uh, sort of exhibition size uh, but you really don't want people especially the photographers with their noses on your print pointing out the things that you didn't do in Lightroom Okay, I'm just going to finish this up uh, with a post crop vignette. And my favorite post crop vignette is Color Priority. Uh, it's less likely to clip than the Highlight Priority. Um, and it also preserves the color values. So it is my default uh, post crop vignetting. And I'm just going to bring that in. Okay, if you want it quite, and you have to keep these vignettes a little bit subtle, I think, is if that's not subtle enough, just uh, crank up the feather and uh, bring back the midpoint so we're getting the darkening at the edges. Maybe too much on the feather there. And uh, that is something that I'm um, now uh, thinking is the, the best vignette for this image. If you want to see a before and after, if you're not too sure whether you want a vignette, just switch, toggle off the light switch or the panel switch there and to see the before and after, maybe a little bit strong and uh, just wind that back a little bit. Okay, so we're pretty much um, uh, finished uh, with this image um, and uh, we're sort of uh, ready to go. Absolutely the last thing that I ever do with an image is just double check those uh, white and black points, especially when you're adding graduated filters and vignettes. And so again, holding down the Alt option, just make sure that we've got the white point set 
and also the black point okay now we can push that down clipping come back okay now don't be too uh, overly concerned especially with very vibrant images with lots of rich uh, colors don't be worried if your highlight uh, warning triangles are lit up with colors it's the white um, luminance clipping that you want to be avoiding don't worry if uh, a color falls slightly out of gamut on a sunset image okay so uh, we're pretty much done and um, to finish this off I'm just going to create what's called a snapshot I'm just going to go command N on a Mac control N on a PC and I'll call it my um, sunset edit and if any time that I um, uh, accidentally reset this image I don't have to remember everything that I've done I can just come to my um, snapshots panel and you're not limited to one you can have as many different variations of editing as you like and uh, come back in and uh, the hey presto where we've got that to edit uh, back in a flash okay so I uh, hope you enjoyed watching my Prince's Pier long exposure sunset edit <laughs>